Yeah, now we're good. All right. So again, the two just is for reporting. So this is the process. First, look for collinear pairs. Uh, if we have collinear pairs, it would look like this. A line would be divided into two angles or more than two angles. And then it, once you found all of those and solve for those, uh, then you would look for triangles and all the interior angles, angles of the triangle added to 180. So what I was saying is you can always just create equations, even if you can't solve them. Just create the equations and then go back and try to plug stuff in. If I just have triangle ABC, I could just, and I'm going to take shortcuts because we're in a hurry. I could just say A, angle, that means angle A plus angle B plus angle C has to equal 180. Those three angles have to add up to 180. So just create equations that you know are true. Don't get hung up on trying to solve unless you can just see what you need to do. Um, this is more for in the beginning stages when we're kind of learning it and we're struggling. The first quiz you take probably going to be the most difficult one. Then you can do a retake and you'll have a better understanding. But just set equations up. Then go back, try to plug in and solve. Um, and we'll, we'll do that process today. So there we said for this first problem, number one, there are no collinear pairs, so I can't really do anything with that. So I move on to the next thing. So I can set an equation up. Whether or not I can solve it, I don't even care yet. I just want to set an equation up. So I know whatever's in the angles, there should be a degree. Oh, oh no, I changed it on the other one. So I know whatever's in the angle, it does not matter how weird it looks. Do not get hung up on what the numbers and variables are. Whatever is in those angles, if it says degree symbol, then that's the measure of that angle. So again, that was a hint I gave you. Just look for the degree symbol. That is the measure of the angle. That's what we're going to use to add together an equal 180. There we go. So I would say, all right, well, that's got a degree symbol. That's the measure of that angle. Yeah, there we go. 32 degrees plus 50 degrees plus X. X is the measure of that angle. So you got a degree symbol there. And that has to add up to 180. So again, just write equations. Even if it doesn't have, you may have two or three variables in an equation. Wouldn't be able to solve it, but it's still a true equation. And then go back and try to figure out what you can and can't solve. So here's the next thing. Once you have your equations written, and that's really the only equation for this problem. Now, here's what you need to write down in your notes. If I only have one variable in an equation, then I can solve for that variable. I'll write that down. Because that's the next thing you're going to do is go through all the equations you created and try to solve. Should be at least one. I mean, you created every possible equation. There should be one you can solve. So I'm going to say, so again, when I go again, you'll see this better in the second example when we have two different equations. But if you only have one variable in an equation, and it, it can be in different places. So one variable doesn't mean there's only an, a variable in one spot. It means there's only one letter. It could be you could have let, the same letter on both sides, but it's always the same letter. So I could have X's over here and then on the other side, that still is just one variable. I can solve though an equation if that's all I have because I can isolate the variable. I can say, okay, well that's 82, right? I just add the two numbers together. So 82 plus X is 180. Well, now I just need to get the X all by itself. So I need to get rid of that. Again, this part's algebra. If you're struggling with algebra, that's something you can practice on your own. I've assigned algebra stuff in IXL also. Go through and look at the solving equation stuff in IXL. So X would be 98. So the measure of that angle. Oh, write this note too. You should write this note down every time I see it or say it, even if you think you got it down. If you solve for a variable in geometry, make sure you go back and read the question because it is very rare that you're only going to solve for a variable. Now, I get in a bad habit of sometimes only making you solve for a variable just because, you know, we have a time limit on the quizzes and 
trying to make it faster for you. But normally you're going to take whatever the variable equals and you're going to have to plug it back in to like one of the original equations for the angle or for the length of the side or something. And you're going to actually solve for the, the length of the side or the measure of the angle. You'll see that in a minute too. All right. So that was the measure. That again was the process. Go through these two things, set up equations, even if you can't solve them. Then ask yourself, okay, do I have any equations that only have one variable? You do, then you can solve. And then from there, you can kind of start working your way through the other stuff. Anybody writing anything that's still up there? Get rid of all. Remember, it's recording too. Is it waiting? Well, and if you have to go back, I got to keep moving today. So here, next problem. We have two steps we want to do. Which one did I say was the first step? So collinear pairs, right? I'm going to call on, I'm going to call on Rihanna. Rihanna, do I have anywhere in here where I have a collinear pair? Even if I don't have information there, just somewhere where there's a line that gets split into two angles. Yeah. Where? Yeah, where the C is, right? That's a line on the bottom. That line, and then I split that line into two angles. That is a code. That's what you're looking for. So I'm going to take that, and what's, again, what's important about that? So I'm just going to create that equation. Now, it doesn't matter that I don't have anything there. I'm going to use a different variable. I'm going to say Y. You could use a question mark, I don't care. But create the equation. I know that that X plus that Y, and again, it should have, I didn't put the markings on it, but those are all angles, they're all about degrees. So that's an equation. Now, I can't solve that right now, because again, I can only have one variable to solve, well, I have two variables, so I can't solve that, but it's a true equation. Those two have to add up to 180. The, oh, oh, that's doing the highlight. Hold on, let me get rid of. There we go. Yeah. All right, so what do I have any other linear pairs? Collinear pairs. Linear, collinear. Yeah, I don't, right? That's the only place where I have a line that gets split into two angles. So I'm kind of done with the first step of the process. So what's my second step? Yeah, I go to the triangles. Now I'm looking at triangles and looking for interior angles. Do I have any triangles in this figure? Yeah, absolutely I have triangles in this figure, right? Actually, I didn't. So I have a triangle and I have three angles in the triangle. You're always going to have three interior angles. So I can create an equation for that. So again, don't worry about what's in there. Just write the equation. Whatever's it. Basically, whatever's with the degree symbol, that's what you're writing because that's the angle. I don't care if it's got X's, numbers, anything. And I used Y, so I'm going to continue to use Y. That adds up to 180. And if you had a question mark, you can use a question mark. If I only have one variable, one unknown, an equation, I can solve. Can I solve this? So I have two, right? Can I solve this? Yeah, I got one variable. Why? Or a question mark is a variable. So if you just have one question mark, you can solve that. And again, I could have had Y in different places. That's not what I mean by one variable. One letter. You can have it as many times as you need, but there's not going to be two different letters in it. So I do the same thing I did in the last one. What, oh, that math comes out pretty easy. So 130 plus Y equals 180. Well, I subtract 130 from both sides. I equals 50. I use different numbers in this than I did in the other class period. So now that I've solved that equation, now I go back to my other equation. I say, well, did that help me any with my other equation? Did it? It did, right? Because what, whatever I use, I use the question mark or whatever. I now know that. If I know 
a variable, like if I know what a variable equals, I don't need the variable anymore. It's not unknown. I know what it is. So anytime you solve for a variable, replace it. Like get rid of the variable and put the number there. We would always rather have a number instead of a variable. Like you must rather have a known than an unknown. So we replace it. Now, can I solve that equation? Do I only have one variable in that equation? Yes, I do. So now I can solve that. So this is what I mean. Don't get so hung up on you look at a figure, an image, and it's got all this stuff going on. Just do what you can do. Like start off by solving for the, the stuff you see that you can solve for. Go ahead and write equations, even if it has multiple missing pieces to it. Eventually, if you create all the equations possible, one of them you should be able to solve. You only have one variable. Uh, so subtract 50, subtract 50. So X would be one. Uh, did we go over what the other concept was that we could have just used to solve immediately on that? I don't remember. I, I want to go over it anyway because I want to get on the recording. Uh, we still right. Anybody? All right. So really quickly, I'm going to just kind of jump to this step. We know now this was 50. We know that means that's 130. So what's true about these two? Well, they, they have to, right? They're part of a line. That's how we use collinears to solve. But what's true? So, so this number added to this number has to be 180. But isn't it true that this number added to these two, like those two added together, doesn't that also have to be 180? Because the interior angles have to be 180 and linear pairs have to be 180. We're using that same number 180. The only way that can happen is if this number is equal to those two added together. They have to be the same because we're always adding this to, to together to something to get to 180. In this case, it's just one number. In this case, it's two numbers. But 180 is always our end number. So the only way that can happen is if we have the same numbers here and here. So the shortcut, if you want to write this, is like your third step underneath the other two. An exterior angle. So this is an exterior angle. Remember, we learned that it's we continued the side, and it, that angle is outside. It's a collinear angle with an internal. So an exterior angle equals, uh, you can use the word sum if you want, if you understand that and how to write that. I'm going to say the two, I'm going to say opposite. The book says remote. Opposite interior angles added together again some makes that easier to say but so again i could have said it equals the sum of the two opposite interior angles it's a little shorter and just again the book calls it instead of remote it calls it I'm sorry, instead of opposite, it calls it remote. So these would be the two opposite, or again, the book says remote, relative to that exterior angle. So each exterior angle has different opposite angles. If we were talking about, like, if we continued this line out here, the opposite angles for this are the other two, basically, that it's not touching. The opposite angles are always the two that aren't, aren't right next to it, they're not being touched. So in here, if this is the exterior angle, well, I'm touching that angle. So that can't be one of the opposite. So it's got to be those. Again, if that helps you to kind of think of it as what are the two angles that are not being touched? Let's see. Is what? The, the sum of these is congruent to just this one. But you can't really say any individual. But but the sum of these, if you add these two together, that number has to be the same as that number because we're always adding to this to get to 180. In, in this case, we're only adding one thing to this to get to 180. In this case, we're adding two things together plus that to get to 180. So yeah, so what's in the circles have to be. 
right? But yeah, it's not one individual thing. Just understand you have to add the opposite two angles together. Uh, all right, so again, if you want, sometimes you will get problems where you have to know that rule. There won't be any other way to solve it. I don't think I gave you anything like that on the quiz. For me, if you just remember the first two things, you can kind of work your way into it, kind of like we did on that problem. Um, so really quickly, I want you to try to set the equations up for that. We have to speed up. It'll be recorded, plus a bunch of the IXLs match up exactly with what's on the quiz. I'll give you like a minute to try to set up. So again, don't worry about solving. Just set an equation up, move on. Set an equation up, move on. I mean, two of them, really. Twenty-five minutes. Yeah. Do like thirty more seconds. Looks like a lot of people have wrapped up the equations part. So, is this what everybody got for A or for X? I should say. Pretty easy, right? Try to get anything different. All wrong. That's wrong. What? How could that be wrong, Mr. Gill? What? Let's get the match with A with F. Yeah, A is not congruent to D. Do not look at the image. I told you that a lot of times in geometry. Here's a an extreme example. Well, not extreme. I mean, a very common time you can't do that is in congruent triangles. What do we use? We said last class. Use the name. Angle A is congruent to angle F, not angle D. So X does not equal 58. Uh, X would actually, so D would be congruent to C. So, and if you need to write this down, write it down, like before you start. A is congruent to angle F. Angle, what is it? B is congruent to angle E. And then angle C is, oh, wrong symbol, is congruent to angle D. So if you need to do that first, if that keeps it straight, I would suggest that's not a bad idea. I can't force you to do it. I'm not, I'm not going to mark it wrong. If you don't do it, that's a pretty good idea to me. Now you just plug stuff in. You just say, okay, well, what is A? A is 58. And I'm going to use equals now that we're doing numbers. So that's congruent to F. What is F? Well, F is the 2Z plus 10. There you go. Then I'd solve for Z. And then I might have to plug that in. Remember, anytime you solve for variable, this would be a case where I might say, what's the measure of angle F? So we would subtract 10, 48, divide by 2, 24. I would need to plug in. Actually, I wouldn't really need to even do that if I said, what's the measure of angle F? Because angle F equals A, so I could just say 58. Let me do that. Depending on what I asked for, that might have even been easier. Most likely in that one, I would have said solve for Z. Uh, now I would say B, all right? What's in B? Well, that's 62. Well, B is congruent to E, so what's in E? Well, that's just Y, so Y is just 62. So kind of by default, X has got to be 60, but just to make sure, angle C is 60. It's congruent to angle D. Yep, sure enough, X is 60. 
So make sure, big capital letters. I'm pretty sure I told you to do it in capital letters yesterday. Write them again. Match up the name in congruent figures. Whether you're naming, whether you're just telling me what angles or sides are congruent, or whether you're solving. Most important, actually it's not most it's important in all of them. So gotta match up the the, the angles. And if it was about sides, like if I had put some stuff outside the figure, then you would say, okay, well, AB equals FE when you went to solve. Uh, BC would equal ED, and then AC would equal FD. So again, same concept. You're just using the first two letters or second two letters or the first and the third letter. Uh, any quick questions on that? We got another one I'm going to show you, so you're going to see that. Uh, this one's in your book. Uh, don't know what example number it is. That will be a good one for you to try. Um, does anybody have their pages out? What, see if you can find that one. Like try two. Oh, is it? Yeah. So 282 is a good example to try. That's a, it's not a super complex one, but it's a good one to get started on. Plus they help you with it. <laughs> Again, if you're, what is this about? That's the measure of what? It's a length, right? There's no degree symbol. I told you earlier, degrees are about angles. That doesn't have a degree. So that is the length of a side. These have degrees. Those are about the measure of angle. What's that length of size? Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, length is just this side, whatever side it's on. Like there's no inside or outside of a side. Angles are inside or outside side is like it's it's the borderline between being inside and outside so it's this how long is that just for yeah that because again we're using the first two letters right that's how we name a line segment is using two points two letters so rs would be the length of that rv would be the length of that sv would be the length of that And then we would have to match that up with that. So, so two y subtract one, right? That's R S. Would have to be what? Equal to yeah. So we would just match it up with T V. Well, that's line segment T V. Well, T V is twenty four. So that would be how you would set up an equation for that. Um, so they do a lot of proofs in this chapter. We're not going to do them. It doesn't hurt you to read kind of through. This means congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. It's just the same thing I'm teaching. If you have two triangles that are congruent, then the angles match up. One angle is congruent to a specific angle. In the other triangle. One side is congruent to a specific side in the other triangle. So that's what this means. And it is a it's a reason when you deal with congruent triangles, it's going to pop up a lot. We're not going to do really any proofs with it. Um, we're going to focus more on the, the math, the calculations, and solving for angles and signs. But that's what that means. I'm sure they say somewhere in the book. All right, here's the big one. This is the new stuff. Super fast version of it today. The good news is what I'm going to do on Friday, I'm sorry, Thursday for you guys, we'll have 45 minutes before the quiz. So we're going to kind of wrap up anything we either went through really, really fast or that we didn't get to and review a few problems that will be pretty much like what's going to be on the quiz. So, and you have IXL that you can practice before that. Some of the questions on the quiz are straight from IXL. I literally just took a screenshot of the IXL and pasted it into the quiz. So you're going to want to do some IXLs. I've already assigned them. I don't know the codes off the top of my head, but they're about the triangle, like congruent triangles, congruent parts of triangles. 
Um, if I have time really quickly at the end, I'll show it since I can I can put on the recording. Uh, all right. So when we're talking about two triangles being congruent, we already said what that really means is that we can take one of the triangles and we can rotate it, which we would need to do because the top isn't straight up. We might even need to flip it if the angles aren't matching up correctly. Um, like if I put that there and if I put that there, and if I put that there, you might say, well, wait a minute, those can't be congruent because if I look at this angle and if I go around clockwise, there's two tick marks there. But here, if I look at this angle and I go around clockwise, there's three tick marks there. That can't be congruent. Well, yeah, it can because I can flip it. If I flip that onto its other side, then I go around, they will match up. So don't get confused. So there's your first note. Do not get confused with left and right. Don't think, oh, well, this side's on the left, that side's on the right of the angle, or that angle's on the left and that angle's on the right of that side. Has nothing to do with left and right because we can always flip the image over and then that flips with what's on which side. So here's what you need to remember, memorize. There are four ways. Uh, I'll leave it zoomed in and then I'll zoom out. There are four ways and only four ways. And these are like, yeah, there's no questioning this to prove triangles are congruent. So you need to write that down. Write there the four ways to prove that, are, that triangles are congruent. The four, oh, I said was. It's supposed to be ways. Nobody said anything last period. So four ways to prove that two triangles are congruent. I'll go over what these mean. So when you're done writing, just kind of put your pencil down so I know I can. Huh, what just happened there? Why did that? What those are are the four ways to prove language of endurance. You can't just write those things, you won't know what they're for. So I'm going to zoom out now so we can see the triangles. Yeah. All right, so what the first one means, that was pretty simple. It means all the all the sides are congruent. So it could that could show in a lot of different ways. It could show like that. It could show like that. So again, this is not, it doesn't mean that all the sides are congruent within one triangle. Like we're not saying all the sides are equal to each other in one triangle. We're talking about across triangles. One side is congruent, another side is congruent. Oh, wait, that doesn't work though, does it? Side to the left doesn't do, so what's wrong? Is that fine? Can it still be congruent? What'd I say? Left and right doesn't matter, right? Clockwise, counterclockwise, because I could flip if I flip this triangle, now the three is over on the left. Left and right does not matter. So it doesn't matter that when I go to the left, I hit the two congruence marks. But here, when I go to the left, I hit the three. That does not matter. You just need to know that side's congruent. That side. 
Um, that side is congruent to that side, so that's two of the three sides. And there's all three sides. Order does not matter. Direction doesn't matter. You just have to know that the three sides are congruent across the two triangles. That's it. And it doesn't even have to be three markings. If this would count, again, they'd still be congruent. I put two markings here. That's fine. Doesn't matter that you have a couple that are the same within a triangle also. That's fine. They would still be congruent, two and two. So that's what side, side, side means. Kids seem to be okay with that normally. Now, figuring it out from an image can be a little trickier. That's what we'll do on Friday. Any questions on that? All right, so the next one, side, angle, side. So S always stands, I mean, you can see the names, but so side, angle, side. You know what that would look like. Again, doesn't matter left or right. So here's the way I would think of this. In the name or in the abbreviation, the angle that's congruent across the two triangles, right? So you need to find one angle that's congruent across the two triangles. So that would be this one. It needs to be surrounded by, doesn't matter what's on left or right, it needs to be surrounded by two sides that are congruent. Well, these angles are congruent and they are, it is surrounded by two sides that are congruent. That's how I would think of that one. Again, kids don't seem to struggle as much with that one. The next one is relatively similar, only now we think of a side that is surrounded by angles. So again, we need to find a side that is congruent because it's in the middle and it needs to be surrounded by two angles that are congruent. Doesn't matter left or right. These two angles are congruent to those two, and they surround that side that is congruent across triangles. The last one is by far the trickiest because you kind of have to skip over a side, and that confuses kids sometimes. So we go angle, angle, and then side. Again, doesn't matter the order. I could do it in that direction where the one tick mark is next to the single tick mark, not the double tick mark. Doesn't matter. Those angle, we have a congruent angle, a congruent angle, and then a side. Doesn't matter the order you go in because we could flip it and that would change things. So that's angle, angle, side, angle, side, angle. And so those are the only four. These two, and really it's just those two, they do not prove congruence. You may want to write that those two don't prove congruence. We talked about this one a little bit before when we said all the angles have to add up to 180, right? All right, we said that before. We said we could have a teeny tiny triangle that big and zoom like, enlarge it and the measure of the angles don't change they still add up to 180 they still be the same angles so that's why angle 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 doesn't prove it we can always zoom in and out in the triangle and the angles stay the same but clearly the triangle is not the same triangle so hopefully you remember that uh this one is much trickier but i will tell you just a simple way to remember this one there is no you know what profanity is there's no profanity in congruent triangles. That's just a memorization trick. Anybody even gets why we're saying? There we go. Yeah, if I flip the order of those letters, what would it read? There's no profanity in congruent triangles. Again, that's just a memorization. It has nothing to do with concepts. But again, that makes sure you understand those don't prove congruence. Only these do prove congruence. I think that's all we got. So remember, I Oh, let me see if I have the IXLs up. 
I can show you the most important ones. I mean, since you don't really have to get any certain number, I I just try them all. If they're super, super easy, just stop and go to the next one. But there's a bunch of IXLs I've assigned. Yeah, all of these. So all of these at the top. Uh, oh, you don't have to worry. If you see hypotenuse leg, don't worry about it. If you see right triangles, anything about proofs, don't worry about those. Just the ones that look like what we did. Solving, na naming triangles is in there. You do have to name two different congruent triangles in the right order. So I would pray if you see ones that are like say solving, I would always try the ones that say solving before a quiz. Yeah, it's a bunch of them. I mean, there's probably 15 assigned, so you're not doing all of them. I right, see you guys. Oh, let me. Wait, um, I think I have to, because is it just like, turn this between parallel lines and stuff like that? I think you have to study. Yeah, you're studying. 